Welcome back everyone, I'm back inside DaVinci Resolve today, uh, which seems to be a common occurrence at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to share with you a node that I discovered quite recently in the Fusion tab. Um, it's called the Duplicate node. Um, so I'm just going to create a new Fusion composition and then I'm going to put that composition onto my timeline playhead over the top and then jump into the Fusion tab. Now it's a blank composition so there's only the Media Out node at the moment um, but what I want is some kind of generator node of some description so I'm going to put a background and I'm going to put a mask onto that background. If I click on one I should put it up here so we can see that this is the ellipse that's masking the background which is black. I'm going to change that to red or something like that. Um, now what you can do from this point is you can actually use the duplicate node in between the ellipse and the background node. So you have to do it in a particular way. So on the ellipse select that and click shift space and find the duplicate node which is this one. Add that and it puts it between the two lines but this is not how it should be connected. So the duplicate node still needs to be into the mask input of the background which is the only way that it can go in. You can see this is the effect mask but the ellipse itself has to go into the for the into the sorry into the background of the duplicate node as opposed to a mask of the duplicate node so we just need to disconnect that and then reconnect it into that yellow arrow so now we just have the same ellipse again and that's because we haven't set up any of the settings within the duplicate node before i do that i'm going to just go back to the ellipse and just change the size of this a little bit and move it around so i might move it over to the side and perhaps reduce the overall size let's do let's do something like 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 move that over to the side and then I also want to animate this in and this is kind of key to the the effect that I was working on you don't have to do this but this is a this is quite a nice feature to to use so if you go to your where you want that circle to be its full size let's say about frame 15 and we'll set the size here as it is, so we keyframe that. I'll jump back to zero and then I'll just put these both to zero. So when it will now just expand uh, up to frame 15 and then we want it to be the same size at say about here. So keyframe again there and then at the end of the clip just put that to zero again so it effectively animates in and then animates out at the end. So that's fine. So now what, what that means is that animation will be copied over onto the duplicates that we are going to put in place. So if I put the playhead somewhere in the middle where the where the shape is the full size and then go to the duplicate node, and there's lots and lots of options here. So the ones that I'm mostly interested in will be the number of copies. So I want 20 of these things and it's not really having any effect at the moment. Um, but also there's a time offset and this time offset will effectively make the other ellipse shapes come in at different periods of time beyond the initial animation. So if I set this to something like minus, I think minus three works about right. And then I can start actually moving the duplicates out from behind one another so at the moment they're all effectively stacked on top of each other if I start moving this center point you'll see that they start to expand out and you can also see that even though we are animating in these are animating in at different points because they've got that time offset applied and so you get this you get this kind of effect now if I have the have it all expanded probably by this point where all of them have got to the same size and I move this back you'll see that that's actually many more copies so 20 copies of them in fact are there now that's all well and good it's kind of cool that, that you can copy them I like that but part of the reason that I was looking at it is I wanted a sort of fairly random blotchy effect uh, on my on my composition that I was doing previously with titles 
And so what you can do is you can use the jitter tab. So first of all, amend this X and Y axis so you get them going across on the X axis and then you can get them going up and down on the Y axis. So adjust that a little bit as well. And then go to the jitter tab. <clears throat> and then what you can do is you can apply some kind of offsetting using the X and Y values here. And then you can also, if you click reseed, you'll get different variations based on the seed number. So something like that. And maybe you want to change the size of of the replicated versions of the circle as well. So they come in, in different sizes. Now this is going to slow my computer down a little bit because it's uh, rendering 20 of these and it's having a little bit of trouble. But you can see they all kind of pop in at, at different points. And you could have this for a title or if you could get it to fill the whole screen by having many more copies, uh, you could have it as some kind of transition if you wanted. Um, the other thing that I found that was quite nice to do on this was back on the ellipse tool you can actually set a soft edge to it which makes it look I think a little bit nicer um, but that's depending on what effect you're, you're going for. So that's how you can use the duplicate node and how you can randomize the replication of the, the ellipse node that you're duplicating. So it comes in at different times and, and uh, different sizes. That's all I've got for today, thank you very much. Um, take care and subscribe. Cheers.